Google Deep links to app content even if you don't have the app. And we'll show you a self-driving car that's optimized for entertainment. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 470 for Wednesday, November 18th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Epson's new EcoTank printers. With Epson's line of Super Tank all-in-one printers, you can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit epson.com slash ecotank to find out more. Welcome to the show. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's jump right into the news. Starting today, Google is displaying deep link search results to content inside Android apps, even when the content isn't duplicated on the web and even when the user doesn't have the app installed. Okay, the results are not on the web and the user doesn't have the app. Where are these results displayed? It turns out that Google is running the apps on virtual machines in the cloud. So for the user, it's similar to having the app installed. That capability originates with the acquisition of a startup called Agawi last year. The new streaming option and new app indexing is enabled today only for a few launch partners, including Hotel Tonight, Weather, and others, and is available only in the U.S. over a Wi-Fi connection. In fact, Google is calling it an experiment. But while the partnerships are lagging, Google has been indexing content for two years and has already indexed thousands of apps. Facebook today launched a new experimental fundraiser tool for nonprofits. The system lets charitable organizations launch specific fundraisers on their Facebook pages. The tool shows the number of people contributing, how much money is raised, and suggests donation amounts. Facebook also started adding the donate button as something that could appear on individual posts and not just pages. Of course, donating means you'll have to share your credit card or PayPal information with Facebook, something Facebook has been trying for years to get users to do. Facebook launched today with three charities and promised 34 more coming shortly. Instagram today announced major changes to its API policy. Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, is killing Instagram reader apps and cracking down on other categories of third-party apps that use the Instagram API. Specifically, Instagram won't allow any app to full, pull a full Instagram feed. Existing apps have until June 1st to comply with Instagram's new system. The changes are an apparent response to news that a third-party Instagram reader called InstaAgent was discovered transmitting usernames and passwords in clear text. Coming up, we'll show you the awesome future of transportation. But first, this episode is brought to you by Epson. Epson's revolutionary EcoTank line of printers for home and office introduced a new age in printing. The new EcoTank ET4550 wireless all-in-one printer doesn't use ink cartridges. Nope. Instead, it features an innovative refillable ink tank. It comes with enough ink to print up to 8,500 pages, equivalent to about 50 ink cartridge sets. You're loaded and ready to print for up to two years. Powered by Epson's leading edge precision core technology, it delivers high speed, vivid colors, and laser quality black text. Plus, auto two sided printing, a 30 page auto document feeder, and easy wireless printing from tablets and smartphones. All EcoTank printers deliver an unbeatable combination of convenience and value with ultra low cost replacement ink bottles. Now you can have the freedom to print without running out of ink. Visit epson.com slash ecotank today to transform the way your home, office, or work group prints. For the best combination of ease and value, turn to new Epson Ecotank printers. That's epson.com slash ecotank. And we thank Epson for their support of Tech News Tonight. Epson, exceed your vision. Joining us as our guest today is Engadget Senior Editor Roberto Baldwin. Roberto, welcome to Tech News Tonight. Thank you for having me on. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. I've been enjoying a lot of your articles. I've been enjoying all of your articles. But you've been writing about and driving some crazy new vehicles lately, and I wanted to talk about a couple of them. Can you tell us about the Toyota iRoad? So Toyota iRoad, uh, Toyota calls it a prototype, but they have it in production. It's, it's a three-wheeled vehicle, um, and it's, it's electric. And when you turn, it actually tilts. So you don't tilt it like you would a motorcycle where the body tilts. You turn the wheel and it tilts like a motorcycle. It seems confusing, but once you're in it, uh, it actually makes sense. And uh, the steering is actually done by the rear wheel. So between tilting and the rear wheel, uh, the rear tire twisting around, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different driving experience than what I'm used to, but it's super fun. 
And they mentioned something about it's supposed to feel like you're skiing or something like that. They have this technology or the system they call Active Lean. What is Active Lean exactly? So Active Lean takes the actual uh, turning of the, the steering wheel and leans the car. Uh, and so it leans the car by the two uh, front tires are on uh, independent suspension. So the suspension shifts so that the car leans into the turn. Uh, it, it has gyroscopes, it has an actuator, uh, the wheel, it all sort of works together in concert to make you feel like what they're saying, uh, like you're, you're, you're skiing through a slalom. Uh, to me, like I said, it, it feels more like riding a motorcycle or a scooter. Yeah, and it's kind of, uh, it looks to me like it's kind of like a hybrid between a motorcycle and a car because it's safer if you get into a wreck because you're surrounded by, uh, you know, it's like you're inside of a vehicle. And it's also a little bit like a golf cart because it's super slow, isn't it? Well, the top speed is 37, so it's not too slow. It's, it's a bit quicker than, let's say, the uh, new mobility project that's available via Scoot here in San Francisco, which has a top speed of 25. But, you know, I could see this uh, doing really well in, uh, like, retirement communities or in, uh, you know, places where people want to rent these little electric cars. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Where When you go on vacation, uh, people always want to rent little scooters. This gives people the opportunity to, to kind of get that scooter feel and get around and have that mobility. But, you know, if you're a little, you know, a little wary of, uh, of, of falling down and hurting yourself, you have that nice cage around you. So, yeah, it is, it is a nice little car uh, motorcycle hybrid. Now, of course, every vehicle that's ever been conceived of uh, lives somewhere between a, a vague concept and you can go buy it or rent it. Uh, mm -hmm. Where does this fit on that spectrum? When does this vehicle hit the iRoads? Well, right now it's already available uh, via like car sharing, like Car2Go or uh, or uh, Zipcar in um, Tokyo and in France. So it's already on the roads in in France and in Japan. Um, here, Toyota's still kind of feeling it out, trying to figure out what they're going to do here. Most likely, it'll be a car sharing uh, situation. Um, I'm not quite sure if you're going to be able to go out and buy one of these. Uh, but if you live in New York, LA. Uh, San Francisco, and you just need something to get around every once in a while, these actually will be pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it looks really cool, too. Uh, now, you wrote about another vehicle, uh, another electric vehicle called the Gogoro electric scooter. Uh, what do you think is interesting about the Gogoro? So what's interesting about Gogoro is instead of uh, charging it at your house, they have swappable batteries, which is, and you know, you go, right now there's the, you know, there's there's a concern that if you ride more than, you know, 30 miles on a motorcycle or an electric car, uh, the battery dies. So you have to pull over, you have to charge, it takes a few hours. With the Gogoro, you just go to what is the equivalent of a gas station. You swap out the two batteries with two new ones and you just take off. It's a few minutes. Uh, it's, you know, if you're used to filling up your car or filling up your motorcycle at the gas station, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, it works on a subscription basis. So you are paying to to swap out these batteries, but it's, you know, it's 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 right up there with what it costs for gas. Yeah, and, and as I understand it, they won't give you the two batteries you need, the two fresh batteries, until it registers that the old batteries are in the slots that they have built into this sort of kind of kiosk type of thing. It also has other modern elements. For example, it has all kinds of sound effects and smartphone controls and things like that. Uh, can you describe sort of what it looks like for people who are listening to this show and how it kind of sounds and looks and feels and how you kind of use it? Yeah, so it looks it looks like you're almost like a typical scooter, but from the future. It's a bit more rounded. It has LED lights. Uh, the front light, instead of being round, it's sort of this, this strip. And it's about the size of a 125 scooter. So the majority of the scooters you see on the streets today are about 125. Um, riding it, it's actually a really fun scooter to ride because it's it's very solid. It's, it's just like a solid piece of aluminum. So as you turn, it turns automatically. There's no body roll. There's no twisting. So it's actually a really fun scooter to ride. I'm a little big for it, but it took off uh, relatively quickly, about as quick as my uh, 250. I ride a 250 Vespa. So the acceleration is actually really nice. So if it, you know, it's in Amsterdam or coming to Amsterdam, it's in Taipei now. If it hits the United States, um, if I were to about six inches shorter, I would definitely buy one. Now, you mentioned that Gogoro is partnering with Amsterdam's Smart City Experience Lab. What is this Smart City Experience Lab thing? So Amsterdam, you know, they're huge on bicycles, so they want to continue that, and they're very progressive in uh, energy usage and making sure the city is very green. So part of that is that they have, they've set up this, this whole system, this lab, 
to to get companies like Gogoro to show up in the city and you know the next step in urban uh, mobility. So the Gogoro sort of works perfectly for there because you know a lot of the of Amsterdam is bicycle lanes. And if you have a scooter, you can actually ride a scooter in a bicycle lane, which is crazy if you live in the United States. The idea of someone riding a scooter in a bicycle lane is a huge no-no. But in Amsterdam, you can do it, and some of those bicycle lanes go to parts of the city that you can't get with a car, and it's actually uh, really nice. Yeah, they're really bicycle friendly there. There are lots of, you know, a lot more uh, transportation for bicyclists and scooter riders than uh, even cars, which is really cool. Now, which brings me to my next point. You know, uh, Europe and Asia are scooter happy already. This fits into that whole paradigm about where scooters can drive and park and all the rest. What about the U.S.? What about San Francisco or New York or L.A.? Are Americans ready for electric scooters uh, to be embraced en masse? Yeah, I think San Francisco is definitely ready. Uh, we have a scoot, which I talked about a little earlier, and it's electric scooters sharing system. Um, so there's already electric scooters on the streets here in San Francisco. Uh, the temperature here, the, the, the weather is pretty much the same year round. We use about 60 degrees, overcast. Winter, summer, you know, there's a little bit of fluctuation, but for the most part, it's about the same. So that makes it a perfect motorcycle or scooter riding city. Um, LA is a little bit tougher. It's a bit more sprawl. Um, and you're dealing with a lot more cars and cars that aren't used to, you know, sort of giving way to scooters or keeping an eye out for bicyclists. Uh, New York, on the other hand, in the summer and the winter, and, or not in the winter, <laughs> the summer and the fall and the spring, I could see this taking off into winter. Not so much. I think you're going to see a lot more people taking Uber, but having that option in the summer and the spring and, and uh, fall is is nice. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool thing, and I'd I'd love to see uh, somebody else drive one of these in New York winters. Maybe they could put skis on it or something to get through the sludge, <laughs> the, the filthy sludge in New York City. Roberto Baldwin is at ngadget.com, and you can find him on Twitter at strngwys. Roberto, thanks for joining us on Tech News tonight. Thanks for having me on. All right. Well, the Swedish car maker Volvo today unveiled an amazing interior concept for a future self-driving car. Their design tries to answer the all-important question, what do you do with all that free time when the car is doing all the driving? Let's take a look at their concept video. Okay, we're looking down into the, into the interior of this concept car. Bucket seats, Corinthian leather. Now the steering wheel is receding into the front dash and a table swings out. So you can have lunch or something like that. We're zooming in on the dash. There are all kinds of controls on the steering wheel itself. Now there's a kind of, a, it's like a, almost a smartphone or an Android interface uh, between the two front seats where you can control music and seating. You can kick it back. There's like a lazy boy uh, footrest that pops up like you're in first class on an airline or something like that. Now here's the piece de resistance. There's a screen that pops out in front of the passenger side, I imagine that if you're in an accident, that screen will be in front of the airbag and you will die because that thing is going to be heavy and hard. Uh, it's got an autopilot mode and so on. But as you can see, if you're watching the video version of this, this car is optimized for turn it over to the car and then just kick back and play games, listen to music, watch a movie, take a nap. Awesome. That's what we really want from a self-driving car infotainment. All right. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash tech news tonight with a number two. And if you want to be part of the conversation, leave a comment on the stories we post. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Mike Elgin. Thanks for tuning in. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.